Hello. Hi. Hello, hello. So we are doing a boot camp today. Yeah, we, we're Stretches actually the stretches. We, we've been warming doing up. some warming up. Actually, that's weird because we <laughs> we have been actually doing like loosening up exercises, ready for boot camp. So this is the kickstart your art boot camp. Yes, I I'm just ready. remembered. I was I'm ready. To, I was supposed to send an email reminder, and I completely forgot. <laughs> oh, Michelle. <It's> okay. <laughs> So let us know in the comments if you oh if you can hear us because I've just got an awful feeling that you might not be able to hear us. Okay, should be able to hear us. Can you let me know in the comments if you can hear us because I've got a different microphone plugged in. You can. That's amazing. Yay. Thank you. Just wanted yeah. to check. Is it clear? Yeah. We're going to be moving. I've got this mic, so I just. Shall we, shall you we do can. a little, can you hear me from the back of the room? <laughs> yeah, awesome. Lovely to have you all here. So we're going to do a real amazing boot camp session now. We've literally pushed it. Come on, out, out of <laughs> yeah, your seats. Everyone, deep breaths. Deep breath, get out. <sighs> but in all seriousness, no, I kind of got changed because I... You, when you want to do a boot camp style art marathon, you want to be comfortable and you want to be uh, loose and up. And, yeah. I yeah, want ready to a, just a really good just mindset. get your sketchbook and just go crazy, go crazy. So, have you got your sketchbooks? Just a selection of materials. It really doesn't matter because the whole point of this is we're going to spend an hour just being creative and just timer. We need a timer. Yeah. Get the timer on. Just going to just see what comes out. Yeah. And. Um, so you just need a few few materials. You can even, you know, I might go on a. I think fancy. Have you got a tea bag there? Yeah, yeah, I might. We've got I'll a bit. We've it. got a bit of peanut butter. We've got. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to eat my lunch at some point whilst we're doing this. <laughs> lunch at um, three o'clock. That's not bad. Cups of teas. Have you got your tea? Have a drink, turn off distractions, put the do not disturb sign up on your door. I've got the stopwatch ready. Got the stopwatch. Right, Sharon's going to go and get the tea bag. Um, and so I'll just say, we've got we've got more post-it notes up. So this is everyone who's joined uh, Make Your Mark so far. It's so exciting um, to see. We've got um, Beth just joined from the UK, Karen, Catherine, John. Anissa, Deborah, Bess, Joe, Jola, Marie, Linda, Lee, Jane joined, Cara. So amazing. We've just been like looking at all the names and where everyone's from. Um, lots of people from France, lots of people from the Netherlands, uh, lots of people from the UK, <laughs> Australia, Spain. We've got a few people from Spain. It's crazy, isn't it? I love it. I just love how we're all from. From around the Tea. world so yes okay okay right we're going to start so we're going to go through the challenge day by day we'll and we're going to put a timer on and we're going to do this timer. quickly and we're not going to overthink we're going to just see what happens so if you've got your stuff ready yes jackie if you haven't got your materials don't worry just listen in just go and, oh, go and grab some paper and a pen now and Shall you can we? Shall we share we what do we've this? got here? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can see this. Guys. Let's go down. Um, yeah. but Let me come down on here. I, I prepared some some materials. So I've got um, lined paper. I've got old bits of scrap paper. I've got a selection of things that old paintings that I've torn off. They're all kind of the same, the same shape, so that it keeps them all in one go, and I can get to Michelle's house. I've even got some cardboard. I'm not going to use that. So. That's what I've got. So it's, um, Michelle's obviously got a sketchbook. I've literally just got a sketchbook and a pen. <laughs> <laughs> I've braided my daughter's um, I've pencils. Post -it, post -it so I've got some pencils and some scissors, some sellotape. I'm going to keep it clean for this section because we're on the <laughs> keep carpet. Keep it clean. Yeah. We, don't, we don't mean rude. We mean <laughs> we, yeah, we'll keep it. We keep it clean. And I've got an old photograph and I've got a selection of books, which is on media. Um, like we were talking about yesterday, and 
and we've got the downloads of inspiration. I can't believe I forgot to send the reminder email out. Oh gosh, I need someone to remind me oh. to send the reminder email. Assistance, more assistance. More assistance. <laughs> so let's get started then, shall we? Hmm. Yes. Let's put the time. So on. We first the time of all. Now? Well, let, should we say what it is and then put the timer on? Yeah. So we're literally going to mind map. So it's, the first stage, so just download everything out of your head. Even if you did this exercise at the beginning, I don't think you can do too many mind maps. It, you might find that different things come out. And I find that the more I do mind mapping, the more I see recurring things all the time that keep coming up or things that I thought were important aren't. So in the middle, what inspires you? Just start sprouting out letters words thoughts images in any way and you can use the word inspires what inspires me or inspired or the actual thing so if you know what inspires you um you can use that as well so yeah shall we yeah let's go I think, I, I, I think we just need five minutes for this one don't five we? minutes do we yeah okay five minutes everyone right yeah go we're on <laughs> let's see how long it takes us Mm. Inspiration. Michelle, this is a really great example of how our minds work. All of my thoughts, keep going, keep going. <laughs> I can't walk <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't listen and do it at the same time. You talk. I'm going to talk. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zone out because I can't talk and do things at the same time. <laughs> I think this is a really great example of how two people think differently. And mine is in my head, and I have to vocalise it. And obviously, Michelle needs to be quiet, so I'm going to shut up. No, go, go, talk. But what I like is the no. noise, and that's what I'm inspired by. Actually, it's the noise of the scratching of Michelle's pen. It's the connections that I'm making um, with you guys and with United Art Space and being human on a screen. So that's what I'm writing. So it can be, really can be anything. It can be noise, sounds, scratching. Stopping. Um. Hmm. I'm like I'm gonna I'm gonna copy I'm gonna be inspired by Michelle. <laughs> I've got words and now I'm gonna put some drawings down. So we've had three minutes now. This, it's, it's not a race, so there's no right or wrong way of doing this. It's um, You can take your time over it. I feel like if I'm on a stopwatch, first of, most of me wants to not do it. <laughs> I want oh, to, yeah. yeah, I'm the opposite. I'm, I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. Different. I can do it at my own time, thanks. No one can tell me what to do. <laughs> 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 I love, I love time. I'm like, move on. Bring me the next thing next, please. Yeah. We're so different, aren't we? We're yeah. yin and yang, me and Sharon. We're totally opposite in every single way. It's so funny. It's That's really why we get on funny. so well. It's really good, <laughs> isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It really is. We've always been like, we, we're so opposite, but we work. <laughs> we have the same, we have the um, or similar, very, very similar in, in my view. Values. Values, yeah. yeah. So 
when we we're very very passionate about sharing um our journey and our experience and never ever want to keep that our secret it's not a secret it's it's um a sharing experience which is what i really get Ooh, what's happening mm. <laughs> So oh. oh my gosh um we'll, we'll look at everything at the end because mm. i feel like it would if we don't we'll talk forever we will so we'll just keep going through and then at the end we'll recap on what we've done because i've just done this little mind map i've just had so many realizations in three minutes that's amazing i think this exercise is so good as well to just revisit to cement things in your mind and bring yourself back to, you know, what it is. And you'll start to notice things. And I've started to notice things just in the last week since doing Kickstart and becoming more aware. And, and I, you know, I've captured something on here, a memory from this week that just ties in with what I'm inspired by. And, um, and that memory just came to me now. And in the mind marks, I'm not overthinking. I was like, oh my gosh, I could, just remember my kids sat at the kitchen table and how that connects with what I'm inspired by. Oh, that's five minutes. Oh, wait, whoa, whoa. Why? So how's everyone cool. getting on? Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Everyone's like, no, stop. <laughs> so um, this is really good. The next bit, let's just introduce this bit while you're reading the comments. Mm. The next one is about stopping and it's about looking and it's about listening. So really being in the moment. And you can do this by going outside for five, ten minutes. Should we have five minutes on this one? Five minutes, five yeah. Minutes. Point, um, so this is about noticing the things that are around you. You can you can lie down on the floor. You can get yourself in a nice, comfortable position. You can um, breathe about it. You can talk it out. You can put some music on. It's totally up to you what you do in this time. Um, it's here because then it's noticing what is around us. It's a bit about um, being mindful yeah. and noticing things that we wouldn't necessarily um, hear. Just Re recently, I've um, sorry, Michelle. I'll just speak. Um, speaking of you, then. Um, recently, I listened. I read a book um, called Skellig, and it, it captured a moment of listening but really deep listening. So we go into that point of going past the surface of the traffic if you're in a city or the, or the, or the birds singing if the birds are or the sound of children in the background or in your face um, or, um, or the, the beeping of a phone or, or uh. my voice or our voices. It's about really listening to the sound of the trees drawing up the um up the up, up the moisture from the ground and really listening to that That's hip start because really <laughs> big time okay so i'm just kind of we've got an yeah. hour to do all yeah. these challenges shall we have five so, minutes for this one five minutes mm. and also mm, let's okay, go just start. just start noticing let us know in the comments what's around you as well you know write it in the comments um if you want to share like what can you see and do it in your sketchbook now just have a look like also there's just things around me that I see every single day, like my curtains and the way they're folded now. You know, I never pay attention to that. There's things on my floor <laughs> that I'm noticing. Like the way the cables are all intertwined. Um, so it's just noticing, just taking that minute to go, look at all those bricks there. Right, I'm gonna do my bricks in my fireplace. It's the it's the point of touch for me. It's the it's where is my body in this world right now? And mm, um, the feeling of the, the the floor, whether it's warm or cold, whether there's a breeze, and where is the breeze on my body? So it's the body experience. Am I hungry? Am I thirsty? How How's my nose? It's a bit itchy. It's the cracks in the ceiling. And 
the pipes in the corner of the room. The memory of someone has been here a hundred years ago to plaster this or put those pipes in. It's a little tiny cobweb in the corner. Maybe the spider is there. That growth. So what can we hear? What can we see? What can we feel? And what can we taste? What can we smell? What can we imagine? And stopping some of those and really digging deep into really noticing for no other reason but just notice it can be really surface stuff like I can see that there is a lampshade on the ceiling at the moment and the, the, there's clouds in the sky outside and I'm really happy that um, Michelle's got a smoke alarm <laughs> it could be just really simple as that it could be as deep as you like oh that was quite nice that was <sighs> got a couple of minutes left so I'm going to take a photograph of that, whatever it is, and I'm going to eat one of these bits of apple. I've got a minute and a half. And this is kind of like a journal or a diary. It's really, really pinpointing down those things that you're that you're noticing. seconds oh that was lovely Great. i feel so relaxed <laughs> i just just looked at all the um patterns in my fire like all the brick and just Ooh. just focusing on all the the lines and the wonkiness and the just so nice just to focus on all where the the splits in the bricks are where they're all crooked and wonky or falling it's so nice this one was mine. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you just seen me. Oh, you just seen me. So I've chosen to write my thoughts down. There we go. I actually feel though like a big weight has been lifted off my shoulders. My head stopped spinning. Mm. Like before I came here, I was doing quite intensive work today, and my head was. Now I feel lighter. Wow. Okay. It's so good. Um, I to the third do, one. Third, number three. One object. One photo. Recreate um, three different ways. So in this one, it's about choosing an object. So the object could be something that's physical. It could be um, an image. It can be something that you can see with your eyes. So actually see it. Um, I would like to suggest that you look at the, the tones, the textures, the weight. How does it smell? How does it feel? Is it shiny? Is it soft? Is it spongy? Um, there's a really great example of... Um, uh, Picasso, who uses this um, this truth in cubism, it's finding the truth of that object um, and looking at it from all different angles 
um, if you can, if it's a three-dimensional thing, if it's a two-dimensional thing, if it's on a screen, um, certainly see how you can rearrange those shapes and respond to it. And there are no rules, and it is totally just about playing and being happy um, in that moment of, I'm just going to not overthink this. Yep. Not overthinking it. We've got, should we have 10 minutes on this one? Hmm. Yeah, we've got a bit of time. One object. Let's do some, let's do some sketching, some drawing, some playing with some materials if we want to. Happy? I'm actually, I'm just going to use the image that I just did mm -hmm. and just recreate that in three different ways. And I've noticed that I've got it on the reverse. I'm just going to work into that because I quite like the way it's come through on the other page. So I'm just going to start turning that into something else now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. And look, this page has got a bit like spotty and abstract. So I'm going to start turning that into something. So it came from this. So it's a development. Yeah. So already you've I've got, got ideas. Three, you've three got your things <laughs> coming yes. from that one. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So have a thing, have a thought, don't overthink it. It's just about responding. Choose something and then go for it. Okay, let's go. Got 10 minutes on this. What one. are you going to do? do I don't know yet. Hmm. I don't know. Well, it takes me a while to think about it. Hmm. So this is the way I work. I like to think about it first. I've just reflected on the stop, look, listen. And I really like the fact that there's some really hard and soft lines up in there. And there's a corner of Michelle's room up in here. It's a beautiful Victorian house um, with some pipes that are just going through the ceiling. And I really like the bend of that. So I think I might just mm. have a go at that. Mm. And I, I like the fact that maybe I imagine in my mind that there are some spiders or something that is just coming out to have a little peek at what we're doing and then go back in again. <laughs> Don't want to scare you with spiders if you're scared. I'm not scared. That's fine. And I'm going to choose. I see them all the time. <laughs> that is. Morag's just joined asking what we're working on. We're just going through the challenge. We're up to, we're up to challenge three. Challenge three, which is choose one object, one photo, recreate it three different ways. So using whatever you have, we've got pen, paper, which I've got my daughter's. Art, one of her art boxes with some pencils in it and go for it. Anything you like, it can be a cup, it can be a cup of tea, it can be a rug, it can be whatever you want. So, um, let's go for it. So three different ways, we don't mean three different viewpoints, but it could be that. It could be the one object overlapping each other it can be um an observational drawing it can be the the negative space of it it could be um one section it can be that you blow something up bigger there are absolutely no rules for this one it's just really good to go for it and get something down and we've got eight minutes left <laughs> So if you've just started like me and you haven't quite finished one thing, um, go on to your next. Sometimes um, at college, we have, or well, at college, when I was at college teaching in more formal capacity, um, I, get, I get the students to use their opposite hand to get them really free enough into not overthinking something. Um, and we, you know, we'd go from not 10 minutes, we'd go from 10 minutes or five minutes to two minutes to, to one minute to 30 seconds to 10 seconds. So you can actually get quite a lot of drawing in or information from your retina, from your eye, into that image that you're trying to replicate. And we, we get so much from observation. We get much more from observation than we do from taking a photograph. Oh, in yeah. It was that guy, Anton somebody, um, who just one of the art shows that I can't remember the name of either. Pascal, I don't... Pascal Adams. Pascal, that's it. I love Pascal Adams. Pascal Adams is so, an amazing He's he, amazing he talks about how, you yeah. know, before you draw anything, spend more time looking than mm. you do drawing. Like, really, he said people jump in too quickly um, and if you spend more time looking and observing, it pays off. Yeah, really Absolutely interesting. It does. 
I mean, that's what I was doing when I was drawing that fire. I was hardly looking at the page. I was really just looking at the lines and letting my hand just do the the drawing. Like, I was fascinated with how all the wonkiness and the uh, nothing is symmetrical. Wonkiness. Nothing is symmetrical in there, and that that's I'm not symmetrical. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. Well, maybe that's and what I'm, you should do. Maybe and I'm turn it into a symmetry. Something that. Oh, really... see, that makes me shudder. <laughs> um, I'm not precise. I'm wonky. I like. I like things that are, you know. Oh, that's uneven. a challenge, isn't it? Yes, it is a challenge. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? How um how some people really like neat, tidy. You know, they really, really love um that control over real pristine finesse finish yeah like marita on, on oh, the team yeah. she's she's definitely a precise marita who does the um the the beautiful birds on yeah on her ceramic pots those drawings she's absolutely stunning drawings really exquisite very detailed very beautiful observation drawings on on ceramics um but it's her thing that's her thing whereas some people really can't they're like oh no don't give me a straight line give me something that is um so we just have five minutes on here so if you've done your three pieces already great and if you haven't do more see if you can do them in 30 seconds or um for a minute or you know, put your own timers on see how many marks you can make within that you know does it have to be um does it have to be 10 minutes on three things. Can it be that you choose your own version, your own way of um, producing something? Um, oh, I like what you're doing there, Michelle. It feels great. <laughs> it feels great. I'm in my happy place. <laughs> that is really cool. Right, I'm going to. We should do this, set this up a bit. <laughs> use I can't wait to make your mark. I'm so excited to make your mark. <laughs> Oh, I'm ready. Too. I'm ready for it. I'm really ready for it. It's really cool, isn't it? It's um, we so need this. We so need to think outside the box and give ourselves time to play and really explore what it is that we want to want to say in our art. So in this one, I'm using. Um, I'm looking at the negative shapes now in this corner of this room using these pipes, so it's not, and I'm using a pair of scissors, so I'm actually not using any felt tip at all, and I'm using some square paper. Really thinking about the negative shapes of the pipes. You can't really see them, but it's, it's a very quick response. Well, I'm having fun. Are you having fun, Michelle? I am. <laughs> Is yeah. everybody else having fun? <clears throat> I'm really having fun. I so love this. This is exactly what we need right now. Especially in our these times, these strange times that are so full of if you, anxiousness and if you've just joined, just literally pick up your sketchbook and just start drawing whatever you see. Yeah. You know, don't we've got three minutes left to oh, make Oh I've got three things. minutes to do a third one then. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, look what's happening here. <laughs> and, and, um, Change my what happens if you paint with a peanut butter? Oh, I know, I know, I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm ready for that. <laughs> I've got all these shavings here. I really want to paint. I really want to do something with them. I'll stick them down somehow. I'm going to use some of this masking tape on some. I've got some bits of paper, scrap paper here. Oh, I might put a bit of masking tape on this. I'm just put some bits on here. This is why it's nice working together like when you when you start to bounce ideas and um, this is what uh, you know when you join make your marks is what will happen you'll post things and go you know i just use this and masking tape and then someone else will go oh i might try a bit of masking tape and this is how ideas breed ideas we've got two minutes left okay I really like these. I really like the way that those pipes. You see, the more that we do something, the more that we really look at something, and we give ourselves time just to observe and to look at it, 
Oh, but you mean? see more. You see so much yeah. when you actually take the time to look. Like those bricks. I've lived in this house five years. I've never studied those bricks as long as I just yeah. have now. And I've seen so much in them and so much amazingness that do I they, even know. Do they know look do they look more familiar to you? Do you feel like you know the shapes now more? Yeah, I do. Than yes. if you were to just look at them and uh, maybe, I don't know, clean them or then just be with them or like the fire, you know, in the grate. Would it, do you feel like you understand their shape more? We've got one minute left. I don't know. At all. You know, or by recreating it, do you... Do you kind of know the shapes of them? Well, now I'm really drawn to this, like, the, the, there's this crack. <laughs> That's a really nice shape, which I've never, ever noticed before. And now I, when I look at it, I can just see that that crack. Like, wow, how have I never noticed that? And these these things, these aren't, these aren't final finished pieces, are they? These things that we're doing. They are exploring and experiment. We are experimenting and exploring different materials. Um, in a very free way. So there's no right or wrong about doing this at all. I keep saying this, there's no right or wrong, but even when I'm making, I'm, I'm making work in my own workshop, and I've been I've been making art for many, many years in lots of different capacities. Even I get that fear, even now, and I go, oh no, I can't do that, it's just, I don't like it. Uh, which means that I'm making things out of my comfort zone, which means actually I'm growing as an artist. So it's really good. Right. Done. Okay. Stop. Stop. So I'll <laughs> quickly share. So that was my, so I know some people have just joined. So what we're doing is just going through the kickstart really quickly. <laughs> We've done a quick mind map. We've stopped, looked, listened. So when I stopped, looked, listened, I, I drew the patterns that I could see on the uh, fireplace, the, the brick. And then it was turn recreate three times something I chose to use the image that came through on the on the reverse so that's what I've just done so I've just sat and just worked into that and then I did a dot like a pointillism version and then I've just started to use the reverse of the page again so I really love how the image is coming through on the other side and then I just keep working into that and it's becoming something else so it's so amazing that's, what you can do in what... 10 minutes Ten minutes. I Ten know. Minutes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, really quick. Um, yeah, I like that pattern. I like that pattern. Um, this one is on a piece of paper. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's. I'm drawing the pipes in the corner of a room. I really like that. Um, I like it because it's. Um, I've used some cello, some felt tip pen. This one is um, the positive shapes of the pipes coming out with masking paper, uh, masking tape, and brown card. This one is of the same shapes which is really abstract and I'm quite excited about this one I'm not sure if you can see it um that one is over an old picture that I tore up and used as my paper so I'm not using white paper I'm using a pre um sort of drawing that I'm drawing over the top and working into and then this one I'm actually really excited about which is not like me at all um I'm now using the negative shapes and I've cut out using scissors. So really clean, no marks, no application of wet or dry materials on there. It's just looking at shape and negative shapes. There we go. Lottie's asking if there's a wee break. <laughs> you should have gone to the toilet before. No wee yeah, break. You've got the whole pass. You've got to take you've got to take your phone with you. And your we sketchbook. <laughs> We can't see you. <laughs> or hear you, so it's I okay. It. I love it. <laughs> okay, let's go on to four. Media. Media is yeah. media is the definition that we mean is media that is books, pe um, poems, literature. Um, well, I just wanted to talk about this really quickly because I had a conversation today with a few people um, on the United Art Space page talking about this because some people, and and this is understandable, saw media. And it makes you go, ooh, media, because you think of the news. Mm. And it was a really interesting conversation that I had with a few people today, which is why I love this process, because um, we started talking about actually what media is, and it is so much more than the news, and media is one, uh, the news is one type of media, but publishing is another kind, which incorporates books and poetry, and, um, and broadcasting is another kind, which is like TV, film, cinema, We've got digital media, which again is another type, but 
it encompasses so many things, not just news, which I think it's really interesting how our minds jump to the news when we think of media, isn't it? And it's so much more than that. So this was a great one yeah, for expanding our perception of what media is as well, I thought. And maybe so, reclaiming, reclaiming that word. You know, mm, media is not a not story that's given by the news. news. Mm, yeah. It's yeah. our own choice of a, a media that we can choose to listen to. Yeah. So I've got some... It was I Catherine, yay. Yeah. Yeah. Well yeah. done. <laughs> this is such a good, it's a good, really great question. It was um, great, and I, and I was saying this is why I love Make Your Mark, because it starts yeah. to get you to question things, like Absolutely. what does that mean? What What is my perception of that? And no one's right or wrong. It's, it's you know, just what we, we learn as we go along. It's great. It is. It is great. It is great. This is such a great learning journey. Um, when I'm in the workshop, should we put the 10, should we put five minutes on? Yes, so let's just recap. So it's looking for something from media a media in terms of like a communication source so it could be a ted talk it could be a I'm quote thing it could be is that okay yeah five so we've got five minutes it, you know we're limited here so you could just pick a book up now is there a book around you or is there um a quote that springs to mind you know or if you're going to choose a book or a film what would that be have a think now of different sources of media and just whatever comes into your mind, just write it down. There's, um, when I'm in my workshop, um, I really love to listen to a particular set of um, songs on a, on, a, on a thing, you know, on a, a musical. I, I like listening to music when I'm working. And there's only a particular set of songs, and some of them make me feel absolutely euphoric. Like my, my whole body, my physical body, is absolutely on fire and I absolutely get so absorbed in that one moment in those in those particular set of songs on my my set list um but um I prepared a little bit here so I've got The House Without Windows by Barbara Newell Follett um it's a great great novel by a 12 uh, her experience of a 12 year old um novelist um I didn't say that very well, but The House with the Windows, some really great words in there. I've got a magazine here called Inside Artists, um, which is a really great magazine. I'm in it. Obviously, it's really great. Um, <laughs> this, this, I'm playing my own Sorry. a little bit there. Laugh at the end there. Sorry. <laughs> Inside Artists, it means that the, it's an insight into a lot of artists and their stories. And then there's another one. Um, so we can, um, I've bought this book recently. And it's by Rennie Edo Lodge, and it's why I'm no longer talking to white people about race because I want to broaden my um, my research experiences of being a white woman. So there's some there's some depth there, and there's some you know some really nice um, beautiful words in here, and some illustrations in this book as well, which is really great. So that's the source of media, the house without windows, and I'm just going to open it up and read the first sentence or the first part of a sentence and it says in her tree so i'm going to respond to that and i've got two and a half minutes to respond to that and i'm going to imagine that i've got lots of nice um music on in my head <laughs> oh, I've got pyro. i think i have I've got somewhere <laughs> Maybe that's what I think. I have to use the things that I've got today. And none of this is planned for us, so we're absolutely no. <laughs> in it with you. We're not I um, didn't plan anything today. <laughs> apart from apart from the materials, you know, that we we brought with us um, and a sketchbook or something to draw on to, something to draw with. That's what I like to think about. Something to draw on to and something to draw with. It can be anything. Absolutely anything. And we've got a minute and a half left. Hmm. 
intrigued what you <laughs> I'm really intrigued what you're doing. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm just, it, this is shocking me. <laughs> <laughs> it really just, just prove if you, if you, <laughs> this works. Mm. Oh, I've got so many ideas now from these. I really need, I don't need any more ideas. Maybe they just need to be parked. <laughs> I'll park these ideas for a little while, I think, when I get out of this. Please, um, I'm done with that. I think I'm done. We've got so, um, we've got thirty seconds left. So I literally I didn't even know this magazine was in my house. I just literally <laughs> just went <laughs> to the living room into a big. We've got a big pile in the corner of the room that's just full of paper, and I just found this. And so I just literally just opened up the pages, and uh, the first thing that caught my eye was down down to earth. So there's a whole article. Okay, we need to stop. Stop about down to earth and I'd literally just I just started to pull out words that jumped out at me from the article so I I wrote down um they described a color palette here with blues mustards orange acid yellows shocking pinks little flashes pampas grass green blues contrast rust chocolate earthy grounding warm down to earth so that's amazing I just got that and I think I might actually make a little Piece of artwork with those colours, the blues, the mustard, the orange, little acid yellow. And... Mm, and I know. This is a really great combination of colours as well, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Brings us on too. So um, that, so but this... that, that now will sit in my sketchbook and if I'm bored one day or I go back to this, I'll go, oh yeah, I might make that. So this is what this process is all about. You capture things. And um, and I'm like, pampas grass, there's just key words there that have stood out to me. That I will go back in the future. I might not do anything right now, but I might just explore that. It's, you know, that's amazing. It's, why? I'm, why was I drawn to that page out of everything in there? It's so interesting. It is really it? interesting. Um, just a very recap. This is what I've done. Um, it's called the House Without Windows, um, and I opened it randomly to a page that says "In Her Tree" it was the first sentence, and um, I've got an old photograph of a random lady that the see this oh, uh, it's a bit shiny um and i've just drawn a tree around it so that's that's it mm -hmm. quite like i quite like that actually there we go um what are we on next um so now we're on number five looking back think about three things so now we now we're going to actually look at our work now and we're going to find three things that connect them all. So this is section five. Should we have five minutes for this one? Mm -hmm. What is it again? Sorry. So um, <laughs> just I'm, like, I'm so terrible. It's okay. We do we do it in our own pace. <laughs> and actually, you're really good because you're the techie wizard. I keep an eye on the comments. Yeah. yeah. But I see some questions coming in, but because we're going through this, I will come back to the, the questions at the end. Um, We're going to plow through these. These. This is our ten-minute kickstart challenge, um, and this one is section five, which is or day five, which is looking back. So, hmm. what we're going to do now is have a look at the stuff that you've just literally produced. Literally, if it's just one piece or the mind map and or the download, um, and it's about thinking about three things that connect them together. So it could be the way that you're sitting, which is making my, my neck ache. <laughs> a little bit, sorry. I had a bad neck yesterday. Um, it could be, so the way that you approach it, it could be the materials that you're using, your choice of materials. It could be a shape, so a particular shape that you really like. It could be the... Um, the colour or the texture or the way that you are applying these over the top of each other, whether you're on a screen and you're actually drawing on a screen using a tablet. Um, you could, it, you need to be thinking now, or not need to be, that seems a bit harsh, <laughs> a bit teachery, mm -hmm. but perhaps now would be great if you could look back on the things and find three things that connect them together somehow so any three things so no right no wrong it's just whatever it is except what it is so shall we have a couple of minutes on this one mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Two minutes. So we're supposed to be recreating mm. from something we've done in the past. We don't have to recre recreate. Oh, we can just okay. notice things. Oh, okay, sorry. Yep. Shall we recreate it? We can decide now. No, let's do that. Just pick out. So for me, I think when I'm looking back, should I put the timer on? Mm. All right. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a couple of minutes on this. Mm -hmm. Yep. Go on. So for me, looking back through mine, just what I've done in the last few minutes, it's about pattern. I'm seeing pattern. And there's always repetition in what I do, like the leaves trailing, the bricks, the pattern. That's just what, the, and I'm just seeing that in the, in the last few pages that I've just done now. So write that down. Mm, and pattern. then what else? So pattern, what else have you seen? <laughs> green. <laughs> you put in my head. Green. green. <laughs> we'll come to that. Yeah, yeah. at the end. <laughs> that was my day nine that I didn't like. And now green comes into everything. And I wasn't even putting green in there. It, obviously, I put a yellow on top of the blue. So I should know I was going to make green. Well, yeah, but we're, but, we haven't got time to think. No, we have time to think. But green it? started coming through. And I was like, like it's just... Chasing me, green. I mean, chasing green. me, yeah. Yeah. So you've um, got you've got colour, the colour green and pattern. Hmm. What about the fact that which is obvious to me, what about the fact that you've used the same image? Hmm. The yeah. same image, the same image is just so working on the same image hmm. again and again and again and again. Hmm. Maybe that could be what, or the way that you've used or is it depends. So green and pattern, what have I got? I've got, in my mind map, I've got hurry, stopping for breath, uh, making connections, um, safety and human experience. Oh, there's lots of those. So sounds is quite important for me. So sounds and making connections with sounds. Um, and then I've got here, I've got stop, look, listen, was about noticing the lines. Mm. I quite like the shape, so the abstraction of shape is for me. Or a junction. Okay, for me, it is the point. It's the point of where. So they've all got something in them. So it's it's got a subject in it. It's got a person or a tree or a pipe, so it's an actual object, and the relationship with the object and how it's abstracting. So those are three things. So it's the object is important. So there's there's definitely this kind of bendy twist going on, uh, which could, the pipe actually does look like a tree, but and it looks like it's growing out of the ceiling. And then the tree image, that's quite interesting. Oh, hmm. oh. well, do you know what I've just noticed? as I've been looking back through previous work in my sketchbook as well, is that whenever I do a drawing or some kind of work in my sketchbook, and I've just, this is just dawned on me now because I just did the same, but I always prefer the trace or the outline that comes through the other side. Oh. I never like, I always prefer the other That's side the of the page. Of what? Oh my gosh, oh. I know, you just made me shiver because that's what I just That's the memory that's what I did in my, yeah, but look what I just wrote in my mind map. This is so weird. Sorry, I'm just going to have a moment because. Okay, we're, we're going to stop it. No, we're not. We're going to stop it. That's we're so strange that you just said that. really interesting. Because my mind map was people feelings moving away, things um, being left behind, like the leaves on a wall, the trace oh. of something. And then I've just noticed that about my pages, the trace. Oh. <gasps> that's really spooky. It just shows oh you gosh. how you just dig a little bit. Why is that? I know. Happening? Yeah. So I'm going to go back to my mind really quick, you know, because I've just had a big realisation about, um, like, I, I always prefer the reverse of something, but it links back to my mind map of I'm really interested in traces of things that have been left behind. I've lit, and I swear <laughs> this is not made up. I have literally just, that's just dawned on me right now that seeing the reverse of an image links back to what, what I'm interested in. I've just got goosebumps. That's amazing. <laughs> that is that is blooming amazing. So I'm going to go back to my mind map now and just capture this memory. This like I prefer, I 
for um yeah put it like down so imprint. whatever whatever you've seen spend a minute just writing that down i'm going to do the same here as well just so that i can keep up with what and by the way you might be sitting there thinking i'm not you know i'm not keeping up with this but we, we've been doing this a long time <laughs> Not here, but in, you know, for years we've been doing Make Your Mark for years. So this process that we're doing right now, you know, we we do this a lot, don't we? We do. So this is what you're learning. Make Your Mark is how to dig deeper into all of this. This is what the course is about. So please don't panic if you're sitting there thinking, "I'm not making any connections. I don't understand my art. I don't know." Because that's what Make Your Mark is going to teach you. So yeah, I want to put that in there. Yeah. Um, imprint reverse of pages. Wow. How did you describe that just then after watching the replay when you said it's like a, a memory? It's, it's like, like a, a memory of what's gone before. It's yeah. the it's the capturing a moment of, of a particular memory of a of some or the imprint or the impression oh, yeah. or the or the the mm. actual the the human touch that's actually pressed like down the imprint, yeah. the imprint of mm. that that mark that's then traced through mm. the other side, leaving the impression of a memory that was once there. Does that, mm. does that help? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, I'm writing my thoughts down of how... <laughs> Charlie's just saying I'm laughing at a picture of a frog that I did for exercise too every time I look at it over. <laughs> <laughs> We're like all really deep. There's a frog, this is amazing. <laughs> Oh, Judy's just saying, I've just realised I like the juxtaposition of uh, solid man-made with natural elements. Wow. Oh, See, isn't it amazing? Yeah. You just start to connect things. And this, to me, this thing that I've just noticed seems so obvious. I'm like, why have I never noticed this before? Yeah. And this is the thing with art and our heads and life. We don't pinpoint the connections that are staring us in the face. Like, that's why I'm making this art, because of... Yeah. So for me, for a long time... You know, my art was about memories, and that was like the top surface. I didn't know, you know, I knew it was related to memories, but the more I've been doing Make Your Mark, the more I'm starting to learn that it's, you know, it's not just memories. It is about, I have this fascination. Sorry, I'm going to quickly go say this it. and okay. then we'll go yeah. um, to the next one. Uh, but it's it's so much more than that, and it's about, um, you know, us holding on. And this was one of my... Uh, realizations this week when I was sat in the kitchen watching my kids they're seven six and seven and I remember looking at them thinking I just don't want this moment to end I don't want them to grow older and uh, but I do but I don't want this I want to bottle this feeling me looking at them they're laughing and I got really emotional and that's what I'm trying to communicate in my art and I've only just started to realize that through make your that's mark so that's so fantastic that's what I'm trying and it's therapy for me oh. this is therapy of learning to let go of things and it hard it's hard and but we have to let go we've got to learn to let go and anyway so it's going deep but this is my process this is me is making, it? using make your mark so you know we, let's just um, <laughs> let's go on to the next one. But I want to say, Michelle, this is this is exactly why we make art. This is exactly why you make your art, mm. and mm. this is your story. And you are you are now noticing what the deep stuff is, and what is the anchor, yeah. and why is it there in the first place. So then you can move on with acknowledging that that point in it's amazing in your mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. it's fantastic it is great. because we all we really all great. think as well or a lot of us think you know, i've always thought oh i don't have a story there's no depth to my work i just do it and there is there's <laughs> this a story, story. Us all. yeah everyone's got a story right yes okay. let's go right next, next one, one. Is, <laughs> um this or that this or that and it's a list but one. i don't have the list Okay, <laughs> so off the top of my head, it was starting to think of things that... Oh, no, it wasn't. That's where I missed out. It's number six, colour. Ah, oh, sorry. Oh, you've got to do colour. We're doing colour. We're doing colour next, and then it's this or that. Maybe we'll go mm. the, the thing. Do you, I can do remember. Do you we want can, to do we can make it up as we go along anyway. All right, are you sure? Mm. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll do... Should we do five minutes of colour? Yeah, okay. five minutes of colour, everyone. So just literally just get colour yeah. on the paper. <laughs> Or the canvas or it says, there uh, was my colour one from the other day actually. 
Oh, I really enjoyed the colour one. And shall we have let's have five That's minutes? Wrong. So five minutes of recreating colour, filling a page or your screen or however it is that you want to do. We've got um, post-it notes on the wall opposite us. We've got um, mm -hmm. some felt tips, some pencils. Um, oh, I know. There can be subdued colours, there can be a palette of colours. Anything that you're drawn to, just go for it. Let's have five minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. Good. Awesome. Let's go for it. Yep. And whilst we're colouring in this page, Chantelle's asked, what if we don't like what we learn? Um, That's an open-ended th question if ever I heard one. I think that... <laughs> what I think we don't have to like what we learn, do we? Because not everything is about, you know, it is a deep, quite a, a big question to answer. But I, I just think, you know, things that I learn in my life aren't always what I want to hear or see or face, but I have to. Um, if it's in relation to the art and you're thinking, I don't like, you know, if it's the gap, you know, you're noticing the gap. Sharon was talking about this because she had a a realization this week. Oh, Didn't you talk, I talk really about did. The gap? Okay, let's talk about a little bit of psychology behind the art as well. If we don't like something about our art, you know, if we're learning about something that it's basically we're learning about something that we don't like about ourselves, or it could be that it's very it's not psychology at all. It could be that you're just really not enjoying. Um, enjoying the material that you're using so the felt tips or the or the clay or the textiles it could be that it could just be that actually you just need to change the material that you're using um to make it something that you do really like so it's noticing the bits that you don't like and noticing the bits um that really work for you and um and this is what we do in Make Your Mark, is you start to question, but yeah. why don't I like this? Yeah. Or why am I not happy with this? And what is the gap? So yeah. what do I need to do to make this better or improve or learn? And this is where we differently. This is when you really need some help as well. Um, so this process, um, I use this process all the time. You know, I use it, I use it throughout of my artistic career. Um, and it is about noticing the things that I like and noticing things that I don't like. And I want to park for a while. And the majority of the work that I make, I don't actually like. Um, and if I don't like it, I'm now brave enough to put it in the bin uh, before it goes out to the work out, out of the studio. You put it in the bin? Or yeah, I recycle it or break it up um, or put it in the garden. Or I hope that someone actually someone did um, take a piece of sculpture outside my workshop. And put it in a school in the in a bush. It was really funny because <laughs> it was really massive, and they could only um, carry it so many um, so many meters or yards or whatever. So so much time. Anyway, I'm waffling. There's a question here. Sorry, I just want to answer because <clears throat> um, someone's asking, does this need to be colors that you like? Not necessarily. I'm not using colors that I like here. I'm literally just pulling colors out of the pot at random. Yeah, me too. And just it's good. Just putting it's them into fun. a line, but I'm. Again, it's pattern coming out, isn't it, for me? I, I have everything is about pattern today for me. And I'm literally just um, noticing how the colours are blending in now. They're overlapping and half these pens don't work. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing worse, is there? No. Right. And then I'm like, now I'm like looking at these lines thinking, do I want them all to connect? Or I quite like the little bits of white space that's coming in now. So literally just learning even from just putting lines on a page like this like do i want them all to be touching or filling the page with i'm colour. quite liking this white space coming through them and i'm loving how they start to overlap and the colors are changing by themselves i'm not consciously trying to change them it's nice it's how we apply the color as well isn't it um sorry i can't write when i'm um, the other day, uh, we've got, sorry, we've got a minute and a half left, by the way, guys, um, just to fill your sketchbook or your paper or whatever it is that you're working full of colour, however you want. You know, it can be random, it can be with your opposite hand, it can be with your, with your... You're going to say tongue. Tongue. 
It's because everything I do is all about food and putting things in my mouth and eating and there's apple on the floor. <laughs> oh, maybe that's it. Maybe that's what I need. There's food in here. Um, anyway, the other day I was in my workshop and I was really struggling. And, and, and I, we say it all the time. But I really mean it. I was really struggling with what I was moving forward with. I've got a new body of work coming out for an exhibition, and I really want it to be about movement and about um, an internal growth, you know, so an internal artistic expression of growth and movement, either moving forward or actually having the figure that moves. Um, and I was really, really, really struggling with it. So I asked um, a really good friend um, who I trust, who is in the arts, and for some advice. And she really helped me see that I was still in my safe place of doing things that I know. I make figures, I make faces, I know how the body works in a representational way. And I'm really afraid of abstracting. Unless I'm teaching, that's fine because it's not mine. It's really easy to say the things that we're showing you now. But actually by doing it, it's really difficult and I really get it. Um, so now the part of me, so part of me is, and we used this analogy the other day or yesterday, a part of me, this is my main body of work. So this imagine these are my figures and faces and the sculpture that I'm safe with. And then what I do is I have a part of my week that I play and I allow myself a bit of unsafe play, unsafety in my, oh, I don't really like this, I hate it mode. I hate this work. I really hate it. And the work that I'm making now, I really, really am struggling because I don't know where it's going. I don't know what's going to happen. It's the gap, it. isn't it? It's like you're, you push, you're it's, exploring the oh, gap because so you know that you've got to do that to push your work forwards in a new direction. It yeah. is so hard to do but you have to trust the process. I trust the process and I have to allow myself the time to play, just to play and just to explore whatever it is that I'm trying to explore. So now I'm making currently, and um, this is behind the scenes by the way, so don't tell anyone. Uh, maybe I shouldn't share it. No, I can't. Um, there's, there's, a, <laughs> there's a little internal voice going in my head then. Um, I'm making abstract figures and to the point where I want to push the figure out of my work, which is really scary for someone who has always had the figure in the work oh gosh, all of my scary. life. It is really hard. But I know that if I can push through that boundary, I know that I'll grow as an artist. And then that will that will feed into my main body of work, which is why I use this process all the time to allow myself to grow. Anyway, I've just waffled and we have now had five minutes of playing with colour. Okay. Yeah. That's gorgeous. It looks like um, a, um, um, Riley. Really therapeutic. Just, just, yeah. Look at that. Nice. Yeah, I like that. It's kind of like, kind of wobbly lines, but straight. And they've got good yeah. energy. Yeah. This is a good point. If you have, if you look at them horizontally, it means that the energy goes that way. But if you go, if you look up, it means mm. that they've got mm. energy going up that way. And we talk about that. That's the composition part in the Make Them Up. <laughs> Dave is at the car half talk. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We do like to talk. And that one's um that one's mine. I'm sure you can see it. Just full of colour. And I've used an old um basics um white printer paper to work on. So it's got a nice kind of sheen to it. Quite Look at that now, how that's come through on that page as well. It's like, just like gorgeous. It's like a trace of a map. Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> Looks like a map. Yeah. Oh, these are so exciting. I'm so excited about these. I hate that. Ooh. So, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? About, um, thank you, Preeti. Well, okay, yeah, next. and their colors I would never ever use. This is why you shouldn't always just gravitate to what you like. I would never have picked all those uh, colors ever, but you know. This and you know maybe I'm not going to make art like that, but there's so much to learn from this, and I've like I'm already looking at the quality of the line and the organic. Like I'm I'm as I was saying, I'm not precise. I like organic. I don't like hard lines, mm -hmm. and 
but just the way the colours have overlapped as well. It would have a different like. energy, wouldn't it, completely, if you had a ruler and a straight line. Mm. Completely different energy, because these yeah. are organic and flowing, even though they are um, they are very bold, mm. strong, intense colours, because we're using marker pens. Mm. Yeah. Mine, on the other hand, is very much um, a random scribble of colour. I've used words to get my images on, too, so I've, I've actually written words down on my paper um, not sure you can see it. um so it's a different so michelle's used line to put her color onto it and i filled my page with scribbles and if i was going to use this i'd probably knock it back and maybe just pick out some of the colors that is going to inform my three-dimensional work definitely even though i don't like it it's going to inform it somehow okay this is it's so lovely having a sketchbook though. So oh, oh, I'm just looking back at all this <laughs> amazingness. What's doing that now? Okay. Even, you know, like you said as well, the question. So let's move to the next one. Let's then. move to the next one. Yeah. This or that. It's a list um, which yes. is task number seven. This or that. Mm. So uh the list was uh so it, it was so there was two parts to this one. So it's like looking at a list that we gave, which was kind of organic versus man-made, um, which is like, I, I say that one because I know I'm organic. Um, light, dark, hard, soft, smooth, rough. Uh, and it, it's kind of like starting to think about what your first perception is of, yes, I am organic. So I, I'm always gravitating to organic. And there's something interesting in that which you which you pounce to because again I always go to organic but there's something in there that maybe I need to play with um, preciseness a little bit or you know because I avoid it because I go to organic all the time and like Sharon was just saying you know you you're figurative and you're going to start playing with a bit of abstraction yeah it's not something you usually do and yeah. it pushes you so this task is really good for actually you know just pushing yourself out your comfort zone a little bit because if you keep gravitating to what you like and what you know sometimes you miss an opportunity to just discover something like that with the the colors that i've just done there i would never have done that something that's um, really unique to you yeah um but then there's another part of this this or that that when you start to think of opposites especially in art it can be really powerful because if you want to make something look darker in your work you'll put it to the op next to the opposite you'll put it next to something really light if you want to make something look smooth put it next to something textured and rough if you want to make something look big you put it next to something that's small and so when you start to explore it from that point of view as well it can really make your artwork transform um especially when you're thinking about colors as well if you want to make something look red you put it next to its complementary and so um so yes this or that is a great one i love it and what i also loved about this was how everybody interpreted this one so differently it was really interesting and there were some people who said you know i really don't like what i've done but it was fascinating i was like you but look how you've approached this <laughs> so yeah I think whatever you do, it's like, there's a reason why you did it that way. So anyway, stop rambling, let's get to it. So I think for speed, I'm going to just pick. So you could literally just pick now the opposites and, and, and do them in, you know, light and dark. You could literally just do light, light and dark. Or write them down. Or you can just write them down if you want to. Just thinking about, maybe just sit down and think about opposites. Like how many different opposites can you think of? Should we go through it? Should we go through some? Um, let's do it okay. now. Should we have a couple of minutes? Yeah, yeah let's do that. Okay, okay. so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go first. I'm going to have um, hard or soft. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go with soft. So I'm going to write that down. I like soft surfaces. Or I'm going to just pick that. So that's it. Hard what or did soft. you say? Hard or soft? Hard or soft. Soft, soft for me too. Yep. Um, warm or cold? Warm or cold. Uh, cold. Um, textured. So rough or smooth? Or both? I like textured. That's the thing. It can be both. Yeah. Yeah. There's no... Depends what it is. 
Um, do you like um, messy or clean? <laughs> <laughs> I like clean, but I'm messy. <laughs> I'd have to say messy, but I like clean. I want to be clean. Okay, do you, big or small? Big. <laughs> and I know that, you know, there's... So probably, we're talking about scale, really, so... Yeah, I, I prefer to work on big Up scale. or down? Oh, up. <laughs> <laughs> the word association games that, uh, that would be really uh, rude <laughs> my mind's going off on a tangent stop or go i was thinking reaching for the stars sharon <laughs> i was thinking of, uh, i don't know what you were thinking <laughs> no that was the next one that was in my head i'm not gonna go there but right, stop or go go stop is that so we are young and young we whatever are we young. shout now yeah. is going to be the opposite yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is us on herbal tea, by the way. I think we've been drinking. <laughs> what about indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. 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 Um, land or sea? Ooh. Oh, now I'm torn. <laughs> oh, that's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah. Land or sea? Come on, come on, don't oh, think it. Land or sea? sea. <laughs> oh, I can't try. I can't decide. Um, <laughs> Okay, um, what about, um, what else do you have? Uh, what about flying or dreaming? Dreaming? I don't know if that's an opposite. Actually. No, no, I don't know. Flying, what's the opposite of flying? Um, Not flying. Um, walking. But we can't. Oh, can't no, really that's, that. too, that's, that's, making that's making my head hurt. Yeah, that that's one. making my I'm um, on one. Give us some, come yeah, on. Come uh, on, help us out here. <laughs> see any day, says Bruti, yeah. Um, what about the opposites? Oh, what about like Long or short? opaque or transparent? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Transparent. Oh, transparent. Um, transparent. transparent, yeah. yeah. Um, what about long or short? I don't know. It's funny, isn't it, when your brain can't put it into context? It's like, I oh, don't know, don't yeah. know, what, what what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, um, is that enough? Yeah. Should we have? Yeah. Should we have five? Round or square? Round or square, of course. Yes. Oh, that's the first one. Oh, they're coming in thick and fast now. Great. We've got mor morning or night, cat or dog. Oh. Oh, I love it. Dog. Cat, dog. Oh. <laughs> round or square has to be round for me. Mm. Sitting, standing. Ooh. Ooh, Ooh that's flying. <laughs> <laughs> Lying down. <laughs> Lying down, flying. Oh, there's so many good ones. Sun that's or really moon. Good. Sun or Ooh. moon. <gasps> oh, these are going really difficult to choose oh. now. I like this. It's pushing me out of my comfort zone. Yeah. This is. That's really tricky because they're like so. You need them both. <sighs> if you're going to choose one, I would say the sun. <laughs> Sorry, moon. Oh. Wet or dry? Oh, it's a tricky one as well. Dry. Light or dark? Yeah, I mm. um, light or dark. For me, light. Oh, yeah. But it's funny then when your brain starts mm. going, but what about nighttime and when there's all little tiny lights everywhere? And, <laughs> Ooh, and it just gives you a completely different feel, doesn't it? Mm. I suppose maybe that's why we need to concentrate on these or just look at these hmm. shall we um shall we stop i feel like we're going mm. over time quite a lot. yes go on okay, Are we okay yep. with that? thank you so much guys for helping us out there that's really awesome yeah we are going over my gosh it's like quarter past four quarter past four quick stop <laughs> ah. okay this is our other artist okay let's do a little brief thing about other artists like i said before i think just choose the first artist that pops into your head right now so oh, yeah. go like any artist, if I say to you, pick an artist, write it in the comments right now. What is the first artist that comes to your mind? Just go. For me, it's Edvard Munch. Mine's Elizabeth, Elizabeth Frink. Tell me any artist, write it in the comments now. Let us know. Done. That's that one done. Easy. Right. Yeah. Next. Um, number nine, what you didn't like. So, or what you don't like, sorry. Choose a material you don't like. 
I mean, you can think about it or you can do it, perhaps. Um, so materials such as, um, if you had a look at the this or that um, that we've just mm. produced, mm. where is mine? It's um, kind of going to, doing the opposite of what, it's doing, yeah. yeah. So doing the opposite of what you don't like. Or what so you do like. actually, I'm going to do this really quickly. I'm going to do these precise lines because they're I oh, don't yeah. enjoy them. So I'm going to try and get a ruler and I'm going to do precise very quickly. Let's just do three minutes on this. Okay. <laughs> three minutes. I've got some wire here. If you uh, you could literally just write in your sketchbook something that you might explore in the future that you don't like. Um, so it could be something like you don't like the colour green or you don't like the you don't like using things that aren't um, special. So there is a really great um, I keep going on at collect because it's like it's on right now. It's only on I think it's finished today. But there was a really great Lowy Craft Prize um, finalist that was talking about using concrete in his art. Um, because his parents were builders, um, his dad was a builder, he came from a family of builders, and he used concrete as a high-end material for his, his um, sculpture work. And I thought that was absolutely fantastic. You know, so we use things that are not necessarily um, used for the purpose that they were supposed to be used for. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? I don't know, I wasn't listening, sorry. Okay, um, so... <laughs> the reason why we use things that we or we choose things or this is a great task to choose something that you don't like um, because then it it gives you a, a different opportunity to look at it in a different way so for instance uh, Magdalena Grozek who is a wonderful friend and artist um, she asked me or suggested that I use a colour that I don't like in my work and I really hate or hated, or really, really did not like the colour green or pink, but actually I use green and pink in my work quite a lot. Green is everywhere in it. Um, and the materials that we use can be, oh, what am I trying to say? It's just pushing your perception of what you think you like. It goes back to that yeah. thing that sometimes if we just go, I, I'm, all, I'm organic, I like organic. We're just sometimes missing an opportunity for, exploring something that we mm. think we've made up in our minds that we don't like or we're not good at and then when you play with it a little bit you go gosh actually yeah. actually I do like this or so there is something in this that I'm good at and it just you know we make our minds up about things and maybe questioning that you know why, it why is, is it that we don't like something yeah what is it about that we don't like straight lines and so maybe we need the straight lines to make up the the balance in the wiggly bits. In well, that's work. what I was saying earlier. If you want to make something more organic, you put it next to a little square or, or mm. organic. So, you know, and that's opposite. what I need to think about is if I want, yeah, yeah. It's thinking about the opposites, yeah. Very interesting. Right. Okay, shall we move on to the next bit? Well, the, the last oh, one is just last one. bring it all together, which bring we can't together. really do in this um, session, but it's just really this is kind of like what leads into make your mark now it's about mm. just going over your your work so far and like what we've just been saying like thinking so i'm just now i've just got my wibbly wobbly lines and my really really straight lines and i don't like the straight lines um but they make the, the wibbly wobbly ones look even more wibbly wobbly don't they <laughs> It's a really great example. Don't they? Really like that example. that one now looks really wavy because I've put solid ones underneath it. So, mm -hmm. so you know, it's about now just I will sit with this and think that, you know, although I don't like these straight lines, maybe I can use it some way. Or and I like it's like looking at each thing now saying I really like that colour. And I literally just make a note of that in my sketchbook. Yeah. And that's yeah. what you can do. Just and this is what Make Your Mark is all about. This is what you're going to do is play like this and we're going to start helping you to look at this in a, a meaningful way and start to learn from it so that you don't just put things in your sketchbook and never look at it again. It's about taking it forwards and learning and making connections, uh, go back to your mind map and go deeper like I just did. And, 
Yeah, it's, it's great. A, it's let's let's have a recap of the the. I mean, this is the boot camp, isn't it? Of the of the the make something in ten minutes in, over ten days, but we've just done it in nearly an hour. You know, ten things are just made in nearly an hour, and there's there's so many that there's so many things that even I'm seeing now in the bits that I've chosen. They're going to add into my own work. It's it's really great what you can do in just one hour, just with some guidance, and that's what we're good at. I think we're good at guiding, and that's what you're good at on here. You're sharing your experiences and helping each other. It's fantastic. I really enjoyed that. Yay! Boot camp. I don't need to stretch though. I need to stretch. Yeah, ah. stretch oh, it all out now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just checking oh. to see if there's any if it's any questions before we go. So if you, um, hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully it wasn't too intense. <laughs> it was a boot camp after all. But even if you just do a small part, you know you've done you've done something. Just free yourselves up and. Um, so I would. I'm going to go now because I know that some people are going to be watching the replay of this. Um, Thank you so much for joining in, everybody. Oh, on the fly, really yes, 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 yes. So <laughs> oh, on the fly, brilliant. <laughs> so yeah, we are. You're very welcome. Thank you for joining us. It was insane, but fun. Yeah. <laughs> like By the way, I just want to say, make your mark isn't like this. We don't do it intense like this. Make your mark is definitely at your own pace. But we wanted to show you. And to show ourselves, you know, how much we can actually get done. And I know we've run up, we've run over, but um, you know, how much you can get done when you when you power through. So and uh, there's a lot to learn within an, within an hour, just over an hour. So if you're taking at your mark, it shows you how much you can get through in in one hour of play and bring that into the the lessons with Sharon and really start to understand about your art you're in, imagine in seven weeks what you're going to learn about yourself and how you're going to push your work forward it's going to be amazing so anyway guys thank really you enjoyed the comments so really great thank you so much for oh, lots of people parts. are having really big great. exciting breakthroughs so tomorrow is the last day you can join me at your mark it's closing for enrollment tomorrow because it starts on friday and if you sign up now you get a little bit of prep as well a bit of an intro lesson and it all starts on friday tomorrow we will have an art party so it'll be a bit more bonkers tomorrow night at 8 p.m will be the last live that we do um obviously not if you join me at your mark then you'll be led by sharon from friday yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to get started. Yeah, I can't yeah, it's wait. Gonna be, it's going to be amazing. We've got such a lovely group on yeah, the post-it post notes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> lovely group of people. It's showing. growing. The post-it notes are growing. I can't yeah. wait to meet you all. I yeah. really am so excited. So take care, everybody. Yeah, as everyone said, I can't wait for Make Your Mark. It's going to be, be so amazing. much. It's going to be great. Yeah. What a journey. Yeah. I can't wait. Literally, I can't wait to get started. <laughs> Take care, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow for the party, okay? Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.